What's up guys, Aaron Bennett here in this video talking about Atomic Wallet. So there was a hack and I hope you were not affected, but if you were, I wanna let you know what I would do if I had money in Atomic Wallet, talking a little bit more about Ledger, about what happened with that recovery feature and really what I'm looking at regarding storing your crypto. So let me first just dive in really quick. Many of you guys have heard this from other YouTube stations or on Twitter, but yesterday Atomic Wallet received report that some of the wallets were compromised and two hours ago, as of me making this video, they said at the moment, less than 1% of our monthly active users have been affected. Last drained transaction was confirmed over 40 hours ago. Security investigation is ongoing. We report victim addresses to major exchanges and blockchain analytics to trace and block stolen funds. So what Atomic is doing is they are basically trying to figure out what happened here. Some are saying this is an insider attack, maybe an employee that decided to do something malicious. Others are saying, that it's some other attack vector. We don't really know for sure right now, but they are working with exchanges and blockchain companies to track these withdrawals that were done maliciously and also return that money. And I have heard that some people have been getting some money returned back to their wallet, which is really, really good. So this person said, seems like Atomic had a malicious update that sends your private keys to an attacker once the app is opened. So if you have Atomic Wallet and you have not opened your account recently, or if you have not updated it, I would suggest not updating it. But for most people, we update our apps automatically in the App Store or the Google Play Store. So most of us have had their apps updated anyway. Personally, I had a little bit of money in there and everything is fine on my end. There have not been any hacks. But if you were affected, I am very, very sorry about that. I do want to talk a little bit about Ledger and also Trezor and some other companies like Casa and also take a look at the cold card. So for one, Ledger. So if you already have a Ledger device, like I said in my last video about Ledger, you do not need to freak out and immediately buy another wallet. So what Ledger is going to do is a hardware update, which they have not released yet. And this will allow basically this Ledger Recover to be implemented if you decide to. Now, what I would suggest is that if you're not gonna do this Ledger Recover, which I wouldn't suggest you do it, that you do not update your Ledger device. That is basically basically the best thing to do right now is do not update it the next time it asks you to update your device. Now, beyond that, I would consider looking into another device. There are some benefits of having other devices. Now, Trezor has been around for a very, very long time, and they are open source, which gives people access to their code. But there's no perfect hardware wallet. So Trezor recently announced that they are going to be partnering with CoinJoin. And here, CoinJoin is a process used to anonymize anonymize Bitcoin online transactions. But the irony is that the government doesn't really like it when they can't track your Bitcoin transactions. So this may be a honeypot where government agencies can find you and actually it gives your identity away. But if you have a ledger device, I would consider getting a treasure and you can actually do things like sharding your seeds with the Shamir pack. This allows you to really, really increase your security, kind of doing similar what the ledger recovery does and splitting up your seed and not having a single point of failure. So these are five different crypto steel capsules, which I believe you can split up your seed into five different parts, and you can store those in different places around the world or the country if you wanted to. So I would look into Trezor. I will include links to these below. The Model T is gonna be the fancy one with the big screen. You really don't need that. I mean, you can if you want. The original one, the Model 1, is sufficient unless you really want to do like fancy stuff like the Shamir, where you want to split up your seed, then I think you need the Model T. But even the cheap Model 1 is going to be effective. But again, there's no reason to freak out or to do things without patience, because that is when people mess up and lose their money. So if you are freaking out about Ledger or about Atomic Wallet, and you are like, oh my God, I got to move all my crypto into someplace new, that is when you will fall for a scam or you will see some fake website and you won't have the patience to be like, is this a real website? Is this email real? Or is somebody trying to get my seed phrase and am I making an error here? So a good idea is to 
take a deep breath, be patient, and purchase one of these other devices. We also have cold card. I do not have a cold card, but a lot of people use it just for Bitcoin. So cold card is a Bitcoin only device, which has other features like air gapping. Here it says maximum security when transferring data between devices. So it has other features that apparently make it safer. So if you want to explore these things, which I think is a good idea, especially if you have a lot of money in crypto, I will include the links to cold card and also Trezor as well. For seed recovery, I highly suggest picking up one of these crypto steel capsules or one of the cassettes. These are very, very important. You do not want to store your seed phrase on a piece of paper. You want something here that could, quote, survive Armageddon. You don't want a fire or a flood to basically ruin your entire recovery and make it so you can never get access to your crypto. You can also get the crypto steel capsule and this little credit card steel device on the Ledger website. So I'll include that link below as well. So ultimately, it's not a good idea to keep a lot of your crypto on basically cell phone wallets or uh, hot wallets. So that even includes MetaMask if you have not connected that to your hardware wallet. But if you're keeping a lot of your crypto on Atomic Wallet or Trust Wallet or even Exodus, which a lot of people do, it's probably best to move most of that into a hardware wallet. So that's unfortunately what people have learned recently with Atomic Wallet. Thankfully, though, I think they said only 1%, less than 1% of our monthly active users have been affected. So that's really good. But I think the latest update is like 30 or $40 million has been uh, hacked or has been moved. So if you have money on Atomic Wallet, I would move that off immediately uh, to somewhere else because clearly there is an issue with Atomic Wallet right now. And if you have a lot of your crypto again on even MetaMask, I would consider moving that to a hardware wallet, whether that's your ledger or looking into something like a Trezor, or I'll finish the video really quick talking about Casa. Now they are not a channel partner. I make no money talking about them, but they are a company that does a lot of really high-end services one that I really like, which is inheritance and estate planning. So they also do things like five key or six key vaults, essentially what Ledger Recover is doing, but rather than giving your three shards to a US company, a French company, and a UK company, basically they're all going to work together if they want to, to compromise your account or to get your to get your money out. Casa will help you set up multiple keys all around the country, or maybe you give some to different people and you need three out of the five in order to access your funds. They will do things like that. So what they do is pretty special and you are paying a hefty fee, depending on how much money you have, $1,800 a year for one of their services or $5,000 a year for the one that does inheritance and estate planning. Basically, when you die, how can your loved ones get your crypto without having your family fight with each other? Because one family member thinks that they're entitled to your crypto, but another family member says, no, I'm entitled. Then they fight and then all the money ends up going to lawyers. That can happen. So thinking about inheritance or estate planning is important. Or if you just want to say, when I die, the Bitcoin dies with me, then that's also fine too. But these are things to consider and things that honestly, I need to consider better as well. These are things that I have not fully played out in my head either. So before I end the video, two tweets, one coming out from Coin Bureau. Crypto search trends are at the lowest point they have been since December 2020. So this is a pretty boring bear market. So people are not even searching crypto anymore. And that's a good time to buy. Usually when people are burnt out or as Guy says, they have apathy, is a good time to acquire and take positions in crypto. And then we have Lynn Alden say, every pump and dump on retail creates another scenario where serious people have to explain to friends and family and colleagues why Bitcoin is economically relevant, but that yes, the industry overall is massively scammy for the most part. And those of you guys who are watching, who are involved with Celsius or another chapter 11, FTX, whatever, you can completely understand. There are technologies like Bitcoin. Some people would say Bitcoin only, but some people would say Ethereum or other blockchains that are incredibly important to the future of the world. But the crypto industry does attract scammers and fraudsters, and that's just the way it is. So guys, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, talk with you soon, and bye for now.